Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I'm going to be doing a podcast on researchers fully sequencing a chromosome for the first time. I think this is a cool breakthrough if, um, I think it's pretty, I didn't mark this one down. If it's, it's got a lot of links. It's from IFL Science. The title is Researchers Have Fully Sequenced a Chromosome for the First Time. I'll probably put this in the sciences section or playlist. I'm going to read and talk a little about an article. It's by Jack Dunhill. Okay, I'll begin. Since the first complete characterization of the human genome in 2003, understanding of our DNA and how it varies between each person has become magnitudes better. We use the reference genome to look for disease variants, discover gene functions, and act as a scaffold to sequence other large pieces of DNA. Mapping out the location of our genes within the chromosomes is vital to genetics. So it may surprise you to know that our current reference has a lot of gaps in it. That is, until now, in a paper published by Nature on Wednesday, researchers have reached a huge milestone in genetics by producing the first ever end-to-end parentheses, telomere to telomere sequence of the human X chromosome. The researchers sequenced the entire 155 million base pair X chromosome, even managing to sequence highly repetitive regions that weren't previously possible. The team, led by Karen Miga from U.S. Santa Cruz Genomics Institute, used a combination of sequencing techniques to complete the chromosome and said the key to their success was the use of modern ultra-long read nanopore sequencing. <laughs> Traditional sequencing technology chunks the DNA into lots of tiny fragments before placing them together like the world's most complicated jigsaw puzzle. This works for the most part, but if there are bits of DNA that are extremely similar to each other, the sequencing software can struggle to fit them into the right place. Some regions of the chromosome are made up of huge amounts of repetitive DNA, and researchers in the past have, haven't been able to get accurate maps of them. All right, I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> the kids playing in the back. It's cute. I like it, but I had the air conditioner on, and I'm trying to play with the filters and stuff, but I think people are going to hear the kids, so enjoy. It's making me laugh. I will continue. Quotes, these repeat rich sequences were once de- deemed intra- intractable, but now we've made leaps and bounds in sequencing technology, Miga said in the press release. The development of ultra-long read nanopore sequencing has since improved this by sequencing DNA through a tiny pore and measuring the changes in current across the pore. The technology can read long pieces of DNA accurately and with fewer gaps. Quotes, with nanopore sequencing, we'll get ultra-long reads of hundreds of thousands of base pairs that can span an entire repeat region, and uh, so that bypasses some of the challenges, Miga said. Nevertheless, there were still multiple gaps in the sequence that the team had to manually resolve. A complete reference genome will now allow researchers to compare DNA samples of patients to the reference and identify genetic changes that can contribute to a disease. Quote, We're starting to find that some of these regions where there were gaps in the reference sequence are actually among the richest for variation in human populations. So we've been missing a lot of information that could be important to understanding human biology and disease, Miga said. 
The new sequence fixes a series of gaps that exist in the current reference genome called the Genome Reference Consortium Bill 38. And it's a GRCH38. And will aid in large scale studies for the future. In the meantime, MEGA and the Telomere to Telomere Consortium aim to sequence all the chromosomes in a specific cell line, CHM13, opening new opportunities for genetic research and understanding our genome as a whole. However, challenges remain in applying these approaches to the rest of the genome. For example, in diploid samples, samples with two copies of each chromosome per cell, it will be difficult to prevent similar regions on each chromosome from interacting with the sequence. The T2T consortium hope to develop the existing technology further to complete the entire genome. I look at these type of articles when I read them and it gives me a little bit of hope. We need to understand things better and I say it often, but science is the best way to do this. We will, you know, slowly but surely figure things out, help people on a large scale and it's ever improving, fixing itself, looking for mistakes. And I think these type of uh, studies, this type of research is going to be needed in the future, especially in the days we live in now. Imagine if they could take tie sequences, scan them quick enough, and you got other technologies that can go hand in hand with it, using all of them together. I think this is great. It's got a lot of links in it you can check out. I'll put the link for the article in the descriptions. I apologize for the kids playing in the back, although I find it joyful and uh, makes me smile. I'm wondering how much it'll pick up on the mic. Hope everybody enjoyed the article. I think it's fascinating. Always breakthroughs coming. And I think they will change this for the better. Take care, everybody. Talk to you later.